Hello my crafty friends, it's Krista here from Second Chance Creation. I have a project to share with you and um, no, it's not the video that I was going to put up. It'll be the next video, I promise. Um, but I'll give you a couple of hints in this. But I needed to share something with you um, that I've done last night. And because um, I've been making a few of the travel and notebook journals, which I need to share with you as well. But this video is going to be about waxing paper. And yes, um, a little clown is back just to say hello. And um, um, seeing I've got the time, I want to give this one um, a new look. It looks a bit tatty. I meant to do it a long time ago, but time just gets away from you, and especially in the winter time. So I'll put him just over there. So first of all, I'll quickly share with you, I um, was gifted a scissors big shot machine of quite a few months ago and it's just left in the box because, um, yeah, I just um, wasn't confident, confident enough to um, use it when I looked at it with all these different plates and da-da-da-da-da. So I did some YouTubing, of course, to get my head around it and I thought, right, oh, let's bite the bullet. And then last weekend I did um some embossing so i think that's what you call it i found this plate in an op shop this in an op shop and um 20 cents and i i said oh i should be able to use that wherever it is and i actually was going to use it as a steam because it's got those ridges you know and put um rub some stamp um some ink on it and just go like that but i thought no i'm gonna have to try and use um my little my little big shot so, um, yeah, and I got carried away and made envelopes and various papers. So, but I use this for this procedure as well. So you'll see the results of what I've done with that. And this, of course, is a little candle. It's one of those um, wax melts that you put in the dishes and you light, um, you know, a candle underneath and then it melts in the oil. And it's a lavender um, scented one. And, um, oh, sorry, I've just bumped the stand. And it's cold. So I've got my little mittens on today. It's wet. The sun is trying to come out, you see. Um, my heater has been working overtime, but I don't think you can hear it. So, yes, so I've been waxing some paper to make it look a bit like vellum, I suppose. Um, I don't buy vellum. I do have one sheet, and um, which I'll probably be able to show you. I found that in op shop, and um, I think it was like 10 cents or something. So I bought it because I just don't have any. And um, I treasure it, so I use it. I'm going to use it just for a special journal. Um so yes yeah, so what i've done i've wrecked some paper and um oh, i just love it now i did watch a video and i'm not sure whether it was an aussie crafter or a uk crafter now if any of you ladies know this crafter please let me know in the comments so i can give her the credit and be able to put a link in the description box because i went through all my history of videos that i liked and watched and for the life of me i cannot find it but this crafter used wax beads and um, she put them on the paper and used an iron to go over it now um, i don't have wax beads i can't get them here so and to start off with i actually used a candle and i grated it on an a4 piece of paper and then put the iron over the top and i love the effect and um so when we went to town a few days ago, I went to a shop and it's got for the Aussie girls FDBs, Fair Dinkum Bargains, uh, just one of those, you know, um, dollar shops. And it had six wax melts and it's a well um, lavender scent. So that's what you use them for, you know, one of those incensed oil things. And um, yes, yeah, so, and it's, oh, now I have to, sh this is what I'm sharing with you. So, this is what I used. As you can see, I've only got a couple left because I got really carried away. All right, so let me sit down. And I've got the camera at a better angle this time. So hopefully I can use it like this all the time. And yes, I'm a coffee drinker, so I've got to have my black coffee. I usually have herbal tea, but on days like this. So, I use some... Um, 
Let me see here, where have I got it? Might be the best way to describe it. Have I got some here? You know, wax paper. Just your normal wax paper. And um, here is this. And I've embossed this wax paper. Doesn't that look delicious? Okay. So I put that through this machine first. And there's only um, a certain width, so I had to sort of, um, you know, uh, do half of it and then the other half. But I really like it. And I thought, oh, I'll be able to put that in my journals in between the pages just to give it a, you know, some texture and something different. And I'm sorry if they look a bit grotty, but I've got to wash them. <clears throat> but it keeps my hands warm. <clears throat> so my apologies. So, yes, yeah, so I did that. And then, of course, when I did the waxing, I'll just pop that over here. This is the outcome. And this is um, just amazing. Okay. Doesn't that look delicious? Like, you know, um, it's probably not as clear as vellum. Um, but, you know, it gives it a bit of interest in a journal. And it doesn't leave any residue either, this wax. Which I think is just fantastic. So what I do is, um, have I got it with me? No, I didn't bring it in. Well, there you go. Um, I did some last night and I've got a timber chopping board. I've got a few of them. But this one I'm, I use mainly for um, any ironing that I do here in the craft room without dragging the ironing board in. So I use my um, timber chopping board and I've just placed on some um, baking paper. Um, that's what that is. So that's how it's come out. So I laid that on, on the bottom on my chopping board just to um, get the excess oil off. You see, and I've had this together so you've still got the oil residue on here, which will go away once you iron over it. And what I've done is then I've just placed my um, piece of paper that I want to wax on the bottom. <coughs> you can put any paper under here. You can pay, even put paper on there that you're going to be waxing, so it doesn't really matter. And I use the iron and I heat the paper up. Make sure you don't brown it like I did. You'll laugh at it when I show you. Um, yes, you heat the paper up. I find it's a lot easier. And then I get my little um, wax melt and I just run over it and it melts it already. Then I get my iron on to really get it in there and done. Then I'll turn that around and do the same thing. And then this collects the excess wax. You know, I can flip it over if I want to, um, if it's too much wax. And then I just make sure that all the edges are done as well, and then that's done. And of course, um, when, with the embossing, it's just really, really pretty. I really like it. So that's my take on it. So that's what I've done. And here's another piece of paper that, um, these are all the pieces of um, baking paper that I used. Okay, I'll put them aside, don't need to look at those. And then I have some draw liners. I love draw liners. I bought this a while ago, and it's a uh, full roll, and because um, they're big sheets, you get four A4 sizes out of it. And I've used it throughout some of my journals. I coffee and tea dye them, and they're white on the back, so you can um, journal on them. And, um, and some I leave white, depending you know what the journal's all about so what i do is i put a couple of pages on here because um it'll take up the wax you know so um then you don't need so much wax on the next on on your next page and look at the difference of this isn't that cool um it's just beautiful so i'm not sure if you can write on it but it's a great page to put in between any you know um signature is a bit of interest and sorry for the no noise the neighbors having a bit of a power across the across the road so um, doing wheelies so yes yeah, so that's how it's come up and it feels really wonderful and there is no residue left so you don't have to be afraid that that will soak in another page so from that to that it's quite awesome so I've done I've done quite a few, as you can see, 
to go in my packs. That's a hint, by the way. Okay, so that's draw liners. And I'm yet to try this draw. This is actually wrapping paper. And I haven't tried this. I'll do this tonight. And um, I just love the colour of it. I'm going to see how that goes. So that's that. And then, of course, packing paper, packaging paper. Um, we all know about that when we get that in a box that's been wrapped up with stuff. Um, I had a huge, huge piece and I just un, um, um, crumbled it and ironed it to make it flat so I can use it and been using it throughout my projects. But I've used the wax on this as well. And look at the, the colour of it. It's just amazing. I think you can make really pretty envelopes out of this. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to go when I want to glue something on it. So I've got to try that. Unless I um, you know, do a collage and glue stuff on it beforehand. Um, without any lace, of course. And then do the um, waxing. It might work. I have tried a couple of projects. So that's what that does. And the difference is quite amazing. I just love it. And then I tried some on my tea dart paper. And I tea dyed this. A um, couple of weeks ago, it was a lovely day, and I see the peg mark because I hang my papers up on the wash line, <laughs> and uh, you get that lovely um, look on that. And that's been squashed in a pile of books. I didn't iron this one, so you can still see the lovely little marks just on the edges. So I thought I'll just try and wax that, and look how that come out. So you can still see the the stain but it's lightly translucent it's not um you know fully transparent of course it's not like vellum again what a great way to make an envelope that's already you know has all got that discoloration on it and it's got a light lavender color because of course the uh, wax and you get these in all different um, scents even rose gardenias I'd love to get some more and so that's what that looks like and I already showed you, um, oh, this is, no, that's the wrong one. It's the same one. More wrapping paper. See, I've got quite a bit. And then I had a roll of, um, cover the books with, or wrap your lunch in with. You know, again, op shop find, 20 cents. Thank you very much. You can buy them in, um, in the newsagent. And of course... I, when I did some of that embossing, I got really carried away. So this is what it looks like. Okay. And this is what it looks like now. Isn't that a big difference? Doesn't that look pretty? After, you know, I did the embossing first because I did a whole heap. And then last night I thought, oh, I'll see if they'll wax. And it waxes beautifully. And, you know, and it, that is a little bit transparent, which is great. Again, nice little envelopes, I reckon. But like I said, I've got to try and see. You can probably um, sew some um, coffee dyed paper on the back, so you can actually then, or tea dyed paper, so you can write on it and sew on it to make it look really grungy. Oh, I mean, look at the difference. Oh, absolutely love it. So... I've made a few. No, there we go. Okay, sorry everyone, accident. Let's put you back. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, all right. I hope you. I hope your head head's all right. Um, I'll just see if I can get this. There we go. Sorry everyone. This is, um, like I said, it's a bit of an experiment to get my um set up with the camera right. But of course, my arm got in the way, didn't it? All right, Whew. so um, what I was going to say was, and I'm not going to read this video because I've already redone it twice. Um, these will be in a pack as well, okay? Then I went one step further because I printed out the um, letters of the uh, notes from the bookmaker, which is a free download from Pam, the paper outpost. So I did some in a really pretty font and I used the wax 
to make it translucent. So it's not just on a piece of white paper or coffee dyed paper. I just wanted something else. And that will all go into my journals as well. Each journal has one of these. But then um, um, I'm going to change. It's only on a really small note. Whereas these ones are a little bit larger. So yes. Yeah, so, um, but like I said, you've got to be careful because... Um, you know, if you have your iron too hot and you're getting carried away, um, it leaves a brown tinge, which is okay. We want brown tinges too, don't we? So I've made a few of those. <coughs> then I used some corrugated cardboard. I didn't do waxing here, but I did that um, embossing and I took it through the my, my machine. Oh, look at, look at that. I mean, it flattens the corrugated bits. But um, this is just out of a piece of cardboard. Um, but look at that. Doesn't that look cool? So I'm just going to use those strips. And of course, then I went ahead. Um, you might remind. No, that's the wrong one. You might remember when I um, uh, tore up pieces from a magazine. Not every magazine will take it. Glue them on a <coughs> on paper. It can be magazine paper or coffee dyed paper. It doesn't really matter. And then I um, rub the acetone on it to um, get rid of a lot of the images, but it leaves some of the colours, and it also then does the um, colouring of the edges. This was just a um, um, an experiment, this one, because this magazine page didn't take off all the colours, but it took away the images, which I found quite interesting. So, and I waxed it, and it's oh, very pliable. And just see the wax come through there and it doesn't feel doesn't leave any residue and of course here's a very heavily um, grunged up coffee dyed paper and I've um, chalked the edges and I did my embossing on the on it and on the other side I had a magazine and I ripped out quite a few pages that I photocopied and then I ripped up, I ripped up the photocopies. Um, it had all about letters and lettering, and I found that really interesting because look at all the different scripts that you get, right? So I stripped, so I ripped it all in pieces, glued it on my coffee dyed paper, and um, I inked the edges with my chalk, of course, and then went over it with my chalk to give it that really brown, grungy look. And I PVA glued it. I then put it through my embosser machine, just in little sections. I could only, I actually left it like this, doubled. Um, put part of it through, and then put the other part through, and it went right through. And I didn't really, and I didn't think it would, but it did. It done both pages. So what did I do? Put the wax on same thing and all oh, the feel it just gave it just a little bit of different coloring not much but um, it gives it a real pliable feel where you know it's not going to break and tear so that's all I did I used my old iron that I only use in the craft room and my old um, timber chopping board that I use in the craft room and that's what I've done. Um, I, it just blows me away. So um, that's waxing the melt, um, uh, melting the wax. Oh, dear. Go ahead, moment. And I'll show you what I've been up to. I've been commissioned to make some travel um, notebook journals. Uh, local information center I'm very excited about we get a lot of travelers in here and um, I wanted to make something that they can take home it's it's um, um, and it's flat each journal has a 15 yeah, about 15 16 pages um, one signature and I did a closure with a button but they're all different um, and I used my scrappy bits as a cover stitched right around here I've used the background of this is if you all know the vertical blinds the fabric of the vertical blinds 
Well, um, I found a stack in an op shop and I just grabbed them. They're little offcut, sample offcuts, and I use that as a backing. This is wrapping paper. It has has all of lots of all the Australian Australia all over it, and I bought two two packs from a news agent because I need quite a few, and every picture is different. So I'll just give you a quick flick through. So yes, yeah, so I've I didn't cut anything off. I folded over to make a pocket. So you know, a various um, pages in there. A lot of my scraps, and um, just to make it interesting. One of these um, playing cards, again, an upshot, upshot find. Um, you Aussie girls know about the um, XBT and the little bit of um, cover that I had left are my little pockets. And yeah, so paper clips. And of course, you know, map of Australia. Every journal has a map, not necessarily of Australia, it could be. Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, um, whatever, you know, so, and they might have it in the signature, and they might, I might have made a pocket out of it, but this is my take um, of a travel notebook journal, this is an envelope, had the koala on it, I thought that was pretty cool, so yeah, so, um, and that's what I've done, and here I've made a, um, with all the little offcuts, I've made little scrappy little notebook just pop in there and um, yes yeah, so I've I've just really enjoyed making these so I've made various um, designs and this one here I've put the eyelid on this side here I've used all my papers scrappy papers and made like a patchwork design with zigzag and I popped some old stamps from envelopes on here as well um, eyelet and this little thing it says own your life and another picture of Australia and this one too they're all different they're none there's not one that is the same this is a card that I found in an op shop um, what else is there various papers little bits of papers that I didn't want to throw away this is wallpaper that was gifted to me how cool is that you know a little flip up um, a postage stamps found this in a magazine and made a journal a card out of it I mean how cool is that a nerve tonic you need a nerve tonic to go on those things in the early days so today was her day she's going to go on there and here I've used um, another um, it's from an atlas and yes and I've just left it as a um, flip out you know just various things and then envelope and I've just instead of cutting it I've just made it into um, like a tuck spot so that goes with that and then of course I used my um, oh no you've seen that one I used my painty papers I've got to make some more this was my last one and as a cover doesn't that look just fantastic I love how that looks and um, the eyelets on here and this is the film strip I made. It's actually a pad, um, A5 um, pad. And it had all these various film strips in there. So I decided to um, cut them out. And this has got a, a ship, um, just various view, a train, the lighthouse, and some um, coral over there, a tiny little fish. And they're pictures, images from the Australia postage book. Here I've put a little chart, little dangle on, little heart. Again, this is a different, um, I, this also is from the Venetian sampler. So you can see the texture on that. And because, you know, they're all too quite long, I just, when I fold them over, I use them as a tuck spot. This is an old vintage postcard. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, little writing pad. So yes, I um, wanted to show you this as well. This is from good old Bunnings. Um, the sampler plates, they're like translucent. And um, so I cut the Dulux part off because it was going to be too wide. You know, it could be a holiday home. Wow, let's go on a holiday. Stay at a holiday home. And here, little envelope. This one was gifted to me. Those 
fancy envelopes that we've all made now and um, yeah, another map and the inside the center of this I made um, I used the coloring in paper that you get the pads this is a cut out of a magazine I just love that image remind me of happiness and um, here I've used an envelope that flips down flips up so you can journal on it and I've made up um, little tags to go in there and used um, one of the cards and another tag there so yes yeah, so you can use it various ways and I'm yet to put it something on this paper clip because I'll just put an envelope and it's got a little card in there because me being a traveler as well most of you probably are as well um, you know you need some sometimes you want to drop down a note and you want to give it to someone so you need all these little bits and pieces this is an envelope that I've made into a flip out like a little booklet this is the end of a um, F post roll um, we all know that if you uh, work in a work in customer service I've kept that so you can just um, rip it off here I've made a um, Here's a belly band. This one was actually gifted to me. I've made them as well, but this one was actually gifted to me. And um, this was a um, one of those um, journaling cards that I've just cut up and made it into a little booklet. So, and of course, um, here I had a piece of um, um, a wallpaper journal that I made, travel notebooks. And um, yes, and I'll just cut the strip off and just put it out here, put it on the edge, bit of interest. And again, this is actually a band-aid because it was torn just there. So I've just um, attached it to there. And that's the end of that one. Now, have I got my, my laser wallpaper? No, I don't have it here. Yes, yeah, so I thought I'd share that with you very quickly. And um, they'll be going um, into the information centre. So I'm quite excited that I was commissioned to um, put them in there. And, um, you know, they deposit the money in the bank straight away, um, which is fantastic. So, but it was all about the waxing. I got a bit carried away here. So my next video um, will be... Um, uh, about second chance creation by Krista and um, we've made up this colorful little logo I'm not sure whether I showed you that to you once before it's got my mobile number on so I'm just hiding it and um, yeah so this is going to be part of um, my news as well so until next time stay tuned make sure you've got your bell on so you don't miss out and um, um, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you found this informative. Like I said, if you know the lady that makes these, made these um, with the little candle beads, uh, wax beads, please um, let me know and I'll give you the credit. Until next time, you know what you've got to do. Happy crafting. Bye for now.